Well, ho, 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 and welcome everyone back. Wow, that re that's cringe. I'm sorry, guys. Wow. Um, Welcome back to Sugar Pine Zoo. Yeah, I apologize for that little crappy opening, but you know what? This isn't a crappy exhibit that we're doing. We're doing the biggest and baddest exhibit that has ever been put into Sugar Pine, let me tell you that much. So, of course, we are finishing up the Arctic section over here, our little North American Arctic section. And one of the things I want to include were both the doll sheep and the reindeer, two of my favorite animals that were ever added. And you know what? It honestly breaks my heart to see that the Arctic pack gets a lot of SHIT. Well, it gets a lot of flack. That's probably a better way for me to say it. But I, I, it breaks my heart because the doll sheep and the reindeer are some of the most well-designed creatures in the game, and I just love seeing how well Frontier was able to capture the magic within them, especially the sound design alone. If you guys have ever built an exhibit for doll sheep in the past, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about with the clickety clack on the rocks. You may be able to hear it in the B-roll today, I'm not entirely sure, um, but it's just such a beautiful sound design. I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's amazing. But of course, I wanted to build for both the doll sheep and the reindeer, and I figured, you know what? We'll make it easy, we'll just throw them in the same habitat. So as you guys can probably tell, we're doing a little bit more of a mountainous habitat. And that's strictly because I wanted to kind of separate the doll sheep as well as the reindeer from each other, kind of, or at least give the doll sheep a little bit more separate area to go in. Because doll sheep tend to get pretty, um, they might get a little territorial at some times, if you guys catch what I'm saying. So having them be able to scale the mountains, meanwhile the reindeer's navigation mesh really, it doesn't allow them to that well. Uh, it really does help to really flesh out the story of this habitat in a way. So one of the things I really want to emphasize with it, emphasize within this habitat are terrain changes and really just selling that mountainous vibe. And I feel like it came out really well. So you could pretty much imagine that Sugar Pine inherited this land or something like that. And they're like, screw it, we have this beautiful mountain over here. We're not going to build up any pathway over there. We're just going to give that all to the animals. They can make their own pathways, you know? And so having that be for doll sheep up there, as well as some reindeer, if they are brave enough to get up there, it just worked out so well. And I do apologize if it, like, all my rock work, uh, it takes up, like, half the video. So I apologize on that, but it turns out so good in the end. I do have a few structures for shade for a reindeer. I do have some shade structures for a guests as well, just generally keeping out all the guests, you know, in cover for most of the park, I don't know, just really making sure that even in the winter months, guests are able to, you know, still stay comfortable and visit the zoo, you know, with without any issues, you know how it goes? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys do. But over here I want to have a little bit of a moat, so you see me kind of struggling to get that ready. Uh, nothing too crazy, just as a ways to swear, um, reindeer and doll sheep to not really get up to the guests all too well. And over here, this is actually my favorite part of the habitat. Uh, I want to do this big indoor section with like this beautiful timber frame. And I'm using, of course, a little poison blade technique with using the mud pillars and whatnot, just to really get this idea of a circular building really all set and flat. Um, and just generally making sure that I'm able to make it look good in the end. So one of the main problems when you design circular buildings like this is generally getting it to flow within these small sections in between these instances. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do right now. I just use my best knowledge of my pieces to the best of my abilities to really try and get a good looking roof over here. So of course, I'm following with the same color scheme as we're doing before with the Arctic section. I'm just using a big old mix of orange and green. That same nice orange and green that you get when you go to like national parks and stuff like that. It just has this beautiful, beautiful vibe to it. And I just really do hope you guys like it because, oh my gosh, th this took so much out of me. This entire build just actually took so much time out of me. You may notice so many transitions in this, and this is because I just could not dedicate myself to finish this exhibit. It was just like, it's so daunting of a project, and this is why I always suggest please build smaller than you than you like really think you will actually build for if that makes sense because as you guys can probably tell from the 
Arctic Fox habitat from a couple weeks ago, I think. Maybe even last week, I don't even know. Time is just a weird moving sequence at this point. Uh, just generally telling from that, it's it really does go to show how difficult scale can be when you're building stuff like this. So, in particular, in my experience, I usually keep on building bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it just gets absurdly big, and I'll admit that is a little bit of a flaw with this habitat in particular. I do apologize on that regard. I wish I could go back and make it smaller, but I figured, you know what, Leaf is just gonna run with this idea, and there you go. Look at that beautiful, beautiful building. The interior is so freaking fantastic for me. I love the like lighting and the shading that goes on in there. And using the, uh, I believe I use the plaster pillars just as a way to really like, you know, give it a little bit more structure in the center. I don't know, I just really love how that came out. And you can see me start to take like some pictures. I was so proud of this damn thing. I don't know why. It just turned out so good in the end. But here I am working on some glass viewing inside here. You'd imagine that like, you know, the other one might not be open during the winter, but inside here it might be heated. You may have like some educational talks and something like that. Just as a way to get guests indoors and, you know, stop them from freezing. I may actually connect another building to that. I'm not not entirely sure may have it lead into a polar bear exhibit guys I don't even know where sugar pine is going at this point but I know we're so close to finishing it actually not really we have a lot more to go I definitely do want all the North American DLC animals in here uh, just because you know I just want the excuse to play with them all and so I know we still have the cougars to build for I'm trying to think of what else we did the sea lions we did the moose we did prairie dogs arctic fox I uh, beavers yeah so the mountain lion bullfrog is done I'm trying to think of the last thing what do you get I'm, I'm failing to even remember what the last animal is oh well who, who, it's probably not that important just cut to it like crying in the corner but that's at least the idea for what we're doing over here and i'm not sure if i want to include a south american section too i feel like i've dabbled with this idea in the past uh not south america but more so central america so possibly introducing like the ela monster uh american alligator there we go so we definitely still do need the american alligator exhibit i'm not really sure how we're going to integrate that uh since we already did the American Waters, but I did make it clear that I wanted it to be separate. I wanted to feature the alligator on its own, so maybe we'll have like a little bit of a swamp building. Who the heck knows? I know up in Maine, there is a place, York's Wild Kingdom, that actually does keep American alligators. So that'd be interesting to kind of implement them there. Maybe we'll do some like small bird aviaries or something just for like the warmer months, maybe for like songbirds and stuff like that. But I don't know. Sugar Pine is just a roll of the dice, if you guys can't tell. But over here, here, you can see me finally take the daunting task to actually do all the foliage. So yes, this is taking so much out of me. I, like, I bit off way too big of a chunk of that I could chew on, if you guys catch my drift. Uh, just doing all the foliage in here it was a bit of a struggle, but in the end, I think it actually turns out very good. It feels very lush towards the bottom, which is exactly what I want, because as you see with mountains in real life, a lot more of the rainwater just drips down, and snow water too, like the melting water drips down to the like bottom of the mountain, to like the valleys and stuff like that, and then you'll see a lot more biodiversity down there in terms of plants and foliage, and more so towards the top, you only see like the hardy plants survive. Granted, I, I kind of like stretch the bill with that a little bit, you wouldn't see those big trees at the top, but you know, just as a way for scale, I feel like that was the most important thing to introduce over there. I do apologize if you hear some sirens outside that's probably the police being called on me for being such you know a amazing amazing person i don't know where i'm going with that that's that's very egocentrical of me i do apologize my friends but over here you can see me do these little watch towers yes so i really want to include some of these i've been playing a lot of hunter call of the wild recently um really fun game i really do recommend it to you guys it's very fun if you love animals and stuff like that it's very cool just to like you know experience their wildlife kind of like that but i wanted to do a couple of like these big watchtowers 
but you know obviously they're not really functional they're more so just there for decor but i want to integrate some usefulness into them so you can imagine that they're used for shade for some animals and they're also used for like you know they may put some food inside of the mesh inside of there just so that animals can have like a little bit of a snack when they're you know standing next to those or something but of course just making sure it's all nice structurally integral to itself just including some nice stone at the bottom just give it a little bit more support and adding those little frully doos on the side frully doos yeah that's a wonderful word leaf great job but just making sure that those are all scattered throughout the landscape honestly you guys can really see me bob rossing up this entire habitat it's just very much like painting a picture and just seeing what needs to be where and that's how i feel about like foliage and rock work uh just generally making everything feel nice just making it feel nice and clean um i love the integration of like all the taiga bushes with the drin grass it makes it feel so lush and i know that you know the taiga really isn't known for much more plant diversity but it really is beautiful just how well and how colorful it can be in the more colder months and stuff like that as well as like you know just a general like kinds of things that you have over there and yeah just putting down the sage brushes as well just making sure that it's nice and beautiful just i don't know i just really love this and of course what i usually like to do if you guys can already pick up on what i'm doing i always love to integrate a lot more foliage closer to the guest viewing just because you wouldn't really want animals to get up that close to guests of course you want to have a little bit of separation between the two so putting the foliage there kind of acts as a barrier so you know animals wouldn't really go right up there and that's at least my train of thought over there so of course here as well i've been integrating a little bit more of the planters that we see from before i really wanted this nice big one right there because obviously i was way too lazy to do a building and i felt like having nice big planters was the perfect way to really liven this whole area up and yeah just generally making sure that everything looks good uh just adding a little bit more asphalt inside of there just to give that building a little bit more of a purpose because as it stood there was just this big open area of dirt in the middle of it and i was like you know what we'll decorate it later guys well we'll decorate it later you know how he said that about like the uh, covered bridge yeah we'll decorate that later too you know we'll probably have like a fixing up episode at the end but over here uh amazing over here so i integrated these beehives and these uh insect hotels i do forget who they were made by i believe it was either haribo just goron or someone from bro nation i do apologize but these signs as well so lion actually just released a wonderful sign pack with like 50 different signs oh my gosh i'm gonna start using those so much more and more now but i want to have this little bit of an insect garden over here and just really show off how important bees and like insects are to the surrounding environments especially up in the taiga where you have all these beautiful flowering plants i really wanted to emphasize the role that bugs have and that was like the perfect little area to kind of cover something up with this was just mostly me being lazy and was like you know what what's a cheap way to fill up this area and of course insect hotels and stuff like that they're very popular in europe to, for filling up that kind of like type of area but that's exactly what i wanted to do and i have these nice beautiful like iron fences over here just as a way to like you know gate this entire thing and make it feel a lot more proper i guess but with that being said, we are on to the B-roll, my friends. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm trying out a little something fancy with the filters as well, doing a little depth of field. So I do hope you guys enjoyed the speed build. If you guys are new here, welcome. I really do appreciate you guys stopping by for the leaf pile. But with that being said, leaf is going. Leaf is out of here. And leaf cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.